đắng nghiêm. It means adornment with non-discrimination. The sound of the bell is very important to me. I can say it saved my life. A lot of suffering arose in me. And sometimes it felt so overwhelming. I couldn't, I couldn't bear it. When I was ordained as a nun, I could invite this big bell. We don't use the word strike because it sounds violent. Invite is something very respectful and very peaceful. And many times I would go to the big meditation hall of New Hamlet, which is in Plum Village, a hamlet for the sisters. And I would invite the bell again and again, sometimes for hours, just to breathe, just to embrace and calm my feelings. And this is my friend. This is me. Uh, Thầy teaches us very clearly the steps that we can take to invite the bell. For many of us who live at home and not in a monastery, this is something that you can use. This is a mini bell, and this one is a bell inviter. This one is also considered a bell, and it also has the bell inviter. It's the ritual. It's the establishing the relationship with the bell that it can mean everything to us. For example, before we invite the bell, we put it straight like that, not crooked. Make sure the bell is straight. We sit quietly with back upright three times, in breath, Out breath, in breath, out breath, in breath, out breath. That's three rounds. Like that, the the breath is the sound of the bell. That is the bell that is always with us because we don't always have access to the big bell or the mini bell. So I have learned to use my breath as my bell of mindfulness that I can come back to every moment in my daily life. Then you can join your palms beautifully like a lotus, right at the level of our heart. We breathe in, breathe out. And that is bowing to the bell, which is the Buddha. The Buddha will make a sound that brings us back to our true home, but also that is bowing to ourselves. So when we sit at the sound of the bell, we are the bell master, and we need to establish body and mind in that mindfulness, in that state of reverence. I reach down, and you can see that one hand I put on the other because it's difficult to reach down with two hands and I pick up this bell inviter with all the attention and respect. In the Asian culture, when we want to show respect, we always use both hands. And then put it on the palm of the hand, like this in the lotus, with the petals. And as I hold like this, I can recite the gatha. My body, speech, and mind in perfect oneness. I send my heart along with the sound of the bell. May the hearer awaken from forgetfulness and transcend all anxiety and sorrow. It's important to wake up the sound of the bell. Oh, there's a sound of the bell coming. And then we breathe in. In breath one, out breath. In breath, out breath two. In breath, out breath three. I breathe in, I breathe out. In breath, you practice with me, okay? Now the third sound of the bell.
being present for what's going on in the mind manifested through the body. So the bell breathes and we breathe with the bell. Because we live in the monastery, so we use the big bell more often. In Vietnamese, we call it Yung Ya Jie. And it has a cushion beneath, and it sits on it. Just sit and enjoy breathing until you feel that you are in touch with your breath and your body. It's nice also to put a hand on the rim of the bell and just touch the bell. The, the bell right now is very cool. I breathe in, join my palms, beautiful lotus, breathe out, bow to the Buddha in the bell, bow to the Buddha within. I reach out with two hands to pick up the bell and wider body, speech, and mind in perfect oneness. I send my heart along with the sound of the bell. I enjoy breathing a little more. May the hearers awaken from forgetfulness and transcend all anxieties and sorrows. This is a wake-up sound of the bell. In breath, our breath. cell phones, you listen three times like that, or at least two times, or one time, one in-breath, one out-breath, the telephone ringing have become our objects of danger, objects of anxiety. And in that way, day after day, year after year, we become more stressful, easily angered, easily saddened, then we may develop chronic back pain, all sorts of physical and mental illness. So the training, the first part, is to train the mind to be with the breath, to be with the body, to recognize what it feels like when the breath and the body are in stress. Honking of other people's cars, to the screaming, yelling of other people, to the harsh sounds of other people, we come back to our body and mind and say, these are bells of mindfulness. And this is what happens to my body. I recognize that. We also say, ah, this is what it feels like when the body is relaxed. This is what it feels like when the mind is at peace with itself. Slowly, the mind learns to calm down and to quiet and to just taste that moment of quietness, of quietude. And the mind is very delicious. The breath is the best music there is. It is the truest reflection of our state of body and mind. The most powerful thing that is in my power and that is to be able 
to sit with myself, to be there for whatever that arises. We always have reasons to not enjoy listening to the phone ringing. But that's why it takes a lot of love and compassion for ourselves. It takes discipline also to say, this is for my health, for now and for years to come. This is a true act of love. And it's not about talking, but it's about doing it right in this moment. That is truly an antidote. It's a medicine right there.